Have you ever wondered just how people create those big lava cast pyramids? And have you also wondered if you could possibly do more with lava casting than just ruin other people's builds? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how you make your lava cast a bit more sophisticated than your average pyramid. And I'm even going to show you how you could make a pretty cool looking castle in Minecraft simply with a bucket of lava and a bucket of water. Okay, let's just get the very basics out of the way really quickly. To make a lava cast pyramid, you simply pick a place you want the center of your pyramid to go, place a block, you dig around it in a pattern like this to control the lava just a little bit, and then you place two blocks on top and replace the middle one with lava. Then you wait till the lava has flown down and you place your water, casting the first layer of your pyramid. This process is then repeated. And if you keep on repeating it enough times, your pyramid will grow bigger and bigger and becoming huge in the end. Here we have two layers and now three layers, but you will often see people who make their pyramids continue into the hundreds of layers. And those are the really big ones you sometimes see in YouTube videos. But these pyramids aren't actually what we're interested in today. And I've actually come up with a few designs, or I guess they're more like methods of how you can cast different parts of a build and then combine them into a bigger structure that, although being made completely out of cobblestone, can actually look really cool. The first thing we're making is a wall segment. So what I'm doing here is creating a pattern on the floor where the lava is going to flow down. And I'm doing this to contain the lava so it doesn't create a mess on the floor. And then you want to choose a height for your wall and make a line of whatever scaffolding block you like. I recommend something which is easy to get rid of since are going to scaffold a lot, but a lot of it will be hidden within the cast, so it doesn't really matter. As you can see, I've placed each lava source with two blocks in between, and you want to do the same thing with the water so that you place one water source above each lava source. And as you just saw, it's fine to make mistakes, but you do run the risk of creating a little bit of a cobblestone mess. Now you just want to get rid of your water and then your scaffolding. And in survival, you would likely want to pick up your lava sources, unless you want to run back and forth to the nether a million times. I'm just going to extend this, because we're going to need that in a little bit. And then we're just going to fill in the holes. And there we have it, an almost perfect wall. Let me just fix that. And now imagine making this wall, but with a gate in it. And of course, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So starting off, the process is almost the same, but this time I'm going to count from one end and find where I want the gate. I think right around here is perfect. And extend this a little further. Now I'm building this shape, which will define only the top arch of the gate and extend it quite a few blocks forward and behind where the wall is. You make this extension so that the lava will only flow to the sides, thereby creating an opening in the wall all the way from your arch to the ground. Now I just have to figure out how the floor pattern is going to look and you want to dig four holes around the place where every lava source is going to be. It should look something like this. Now you want to find the place where the gate is going to make the lava flow and create a lava safeguard wall, which is just two lines of dirt. And open up the floor pattern to contain any spillage. Depending on where and how big you make your gate, this will look a little bit different. Once again, I place the lava with two blocks in between. And now it just has to flow all the way down to the ground. And as you can see, it flows nicely around the arch that we made and creates the sought after hole for a gate that we wanted. Now we repeat the water step. Then we get rid of the water and then of the scaffolding. Of course, we also want to get rid of the scaffolding that made the gate. I personally like to place two cobblestone blocks on top of the arch like this. But if you want to keep it 100% lava cast, you could of course just leave it as is. And I also fill in the floor of the gate. And now we have two versions of this wall segment, one with and one without a gate. Now we're moving on to making a different type of wall segment, although this one looks very similar to the other ones from the side. This version is actually wide enough to have a walkway on top of. You start by making a fishbone pattern with your scaffolding. And on this one, we're actually placing the lava on top of the scaffolding. So at each intersection, you want to place a block floating on top where you will eventually place your water onto. Blocks that are placed jutting out to the sides are placed with two blocks in between. This is to create the same detail on the side of the wall that we had on the two previous segments. 
And this is how you place the block for the water and you just stick the lava in the space between. Of course, we still have to make a pattern on the floor, but this one is going to look a little bit different. This pattern is really just the outer silhouette of where the lava flows down. It should also be mentioned that there are countless ways to make walls, and if you want one that's completely flat on both sides, you just have to place a lava block on every block instead of every third like I'm doing. So if you're experimenting with other wall designs, you just have to imagine the pattern is where the lava is going to hit the ground and then make the holes in all those places. It should look just like this, and now we can place our lava. Now we simply place the water on top of the blocks we prepared when we were scaffolding. If you're playing in survival, you definitely want to get rid of all the water and wait till it has flown down before removing the scaffolding so you don't convert your lava into obsidian. Similarly to the previous type of wall, this segment could of course be made with a gate in the same way we made the gate before. But I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do that. Instead, we're moving on to a different type of build, which are towers. You want to place blocks all the way up to whatever height you want your towers to be. At the top, you want to recreate how we made the pyramid. And at the bottom, you're going to dig out the same pattern that was also around the first layer of the pyramid. Now you just have to wait for the lava to flow down. Now it's at the bottom, let's place the water. This tower is of course very pointed and doesn't really have any good places to put windows. So, there's also a different tower I want to show where the walls are in a shape sort of like this. And for the top of this tower, you want to do almost the same thing, but this time with a little twist. Right underneath the part that looks like a pyramid, fill the eight blocks around it. You could just fill the corners, it gives the same result. Anyways, lastly, you want to prepare the top and place your lava. And now we just watch it slowly reach the bottom. Perfect, and now place water. So as you can see, this tower actually has space on the walls for windows. You can even make a little room inside the top of the tower if you want. There is one final thing I want to show you how to make and that is buildings. And these can be made in any size you like and you can also make the roof more or less slanted as you please. This is the cast that needs the most scaffolding, but you will still only need to scaffold the roof and the walls can be as tall as you want them. The pattern on the floor will simply have to be a square or a rectangle, depending on what dimensions you're making your building, and you don't actually have to break the four corners because the lava will not flow there. On the roof, you want to place lava on every single block along the very top of the roof, and of course you have blocks above that for the water. And you just place as much water as possible. Now, on the roofs, when you've gotten rid of the scaffolding, you're left with this awkward flat spot, which I would just fill with blocks to match the rest of the roof. Okay, so now we actually have all the basics down to complete an entire build. We have the different types of walls, we have how to make a gate in the wall, we have a thicker wall, and we have two types of towers, and we know how we can create buildings. So honestly, we have everything we need to make entire cities now, if we wanted to, although they are gonna be made of cobblestone, which is a little bit 2012, but that's okay. But that's why I've cloned everything, so I can make some quick decoration ideas that we can throw directly into the build once I've actually lava cast something. I'm thinking something just like this. We could just add some very basic stair blocks to everything and it will make a huge difference even though we aren't actually doing that much work. Hmm, some blocks along the bottom. On this one I still want to have space for a walkway in the middle. And we can add some indents into the wall detail. I'm actually thinking it's starting to look quite nice, even though I haven't done a huge deal. On the towers, I'm not really sure how much I want to add, but we definitely need roofs. And the roofs are gonna be super simple because I'm not adding a huge detailing and I'm not even sure I'm gonna make them like this. But for now, this will do. And the final thing is the house, and I'm thinking we're adding pillars and a roof and possibly also a window, maybe just with like iron bars and instead of panes. 
Okay, so I'm adding all of these details on the fly, so they're definitely not perfect and they're probably not how I'm actually gonna make it when I create the build, but they are just here to illustrate what I'm actually going for. And looking at what we've made so far, I actually think this is a pretty solid start if you want to create something that looks somewhat okay. Of course, you could always get even more fancy with your detailing. Okay, I think this is the final touch I'm gonna make and let's just slowly step back and see what we've created. So these different modules are definitely gonna be my inspiration for what I'm gonna make. And if we compare them to how they look before we detail them, it's definitely a lot better. So the time has finally come to build the actual castle. And I've chosen this little island front to be the place where I'm building the castle because I think it has a lot of potential. Now all we need is some lava. And if we just take a look and we fly over the top of this little hill we can see that back here it has sort of this trench going through this mountain and I thought it would make for a really nice sort of entrance that is protected by natural landscape and I could build some walls going along that sort of fortifies the whole castle even further. Okay let's just start out here at the front with making I think I'm gonna make some towers and we can have like a uh, a water protected front with like a water entrance for like different ships and stuff like that. And I start building the towers and the first thing you see me do is of course make the mistake that I told you not to do and I don't make any sort of protection on the floor and I make a huge lava mist on the water which I then have to clean up. Okay now I'm gonna build the wall and this time I'm definitely making the whole pattern in the ground because it was a little bit of a pain to clean all that stupid stone up from the water but um, we're not doing that again so if I just make all the proper preparations and we make a little gate here we can definitely make a nice looking wall that doesn't spill everywhere so if you're building something like this don't be like me do it the right way and from then on it was actually pretty smooth sailing i didn't make any big mistakes there were a few times where i made some spillage but i cleared everything up pretty quickly Anyways, you see me just continue with the wall and the different pillars and I'm starting to get an idea of how I want the outline of the build. Okay, so this time I'm actually gonna make the tower properly and make the little pyramid at the top here and actually remember to put the pattern at the bottom and I think I'm actually getting the hang of how to do this. And I definitely was. Okay, I think I figured out how I can prevent spillage when it's over water. You just have to create the pattern on top of where the water is and it will contain your lava so it's gonna look a little bit funny but I think this is gonna work and again the pattern is gonna vary depending on what wall you're building and then I simply continued with building walls and building more towers and I was actually doing pretty well and you see me in a bit build a slanted wall over here like that and you could totally do that you just have to know where you want to put your lava and then you can place your scaffolding blocks at the height you need them and I also fixed up the two front towers which were made in a wrong way and also I created an extra gate even though I hadn't made one and you could of course always go back and fix something if you didn't like what you made. And here I'm making a wall which is comprised of both types of wall segments, both the slim and the wider type, but I thought it would make sort of a menacing gate look, but I didn't actually make it into a gate when I went back and detailed it, but it still looked pretty cool when I finalized the build and you'll see that. Of course. And I was starting to build the build into the cliffside or I guess into the landscape and I was trying to put towers at somewhat regular intervals and you also see me create a lot more slanted walls because the terrain was very much uphill. And I also start making the cathedral at this sort of hill platform thing. And I thought it looked really nice, although it did give me a bit of struggle. And did you know that in these biomes, grass will actually disappear when you pour a lot of water over it? I didn't know that, but I found that out when I started making the cathedral and the water was like flowing everywhere. But luckily it grew back and the cathedral isn't actually that big, it's more of like a church, but I like to call it a cathedral because it sounds a lot cooler and I continue the wall back around the cathedral and that sort of marks the backside of where the wall goes on this side. But on the other side, the wall starts much further back where I make the grand entrance with a huge tall wall and a big gate in the front. I made a guard tower that I thought could overlook the whole ocean and I was planning on making a little hanging bridge or floating bridge. So at this point I was on a roll and I was having tons of fun making this. I even started experimenting a little bit. Unfortunately, as you will also see in a little bit, my recording software broke down somewhere along the way. And even though it didn't take me that long to realize, I managed to build quite a lot, which I never caught on camera. All right, so I built some things off camera. Actually, that's not what happened. My recording software broke down midway and most of the file got corrupted. Anyway, so what I've built in between the last part that you watched and this is simply I've made the grand entrance from the 
other side that goes through this trench that I mentioned before. Also, I've added more of like the main house to the castle and a little walkway down here. And I've added some more just walls around it. I'm thinking I'm still gonna add some extra houses back here to make it even more castle-like. And add houses I did. Although in hindsight, I could definitely have added even more than I did. The first house was more of a combination of multiple house casts and the next ones were all smaller houses, which were only one house cast. I also decided to remove the big boulder in the middle of the trench to clear a path from the main gate directly to the main house. I also tried to add a bit of a grander entrance to the main house, although it's still not very Disney castle-like. So I tried to add a tower to see if that would do something, but it still just looks like a big house. But I don't actually mind this because the point of this project is not to show my horrible building skills, it's to show how much you can actually do with lava casting. Then I created a more formal wall with two spires as an entrance to the cathedral grounds. And in front of that, you see how I created the little walkway, which I had designed in the time where my program was down. But I think you get the idea that it's fairly easy to come up with new designs and lava casting really doesn't have any limits to what you can make with it. And now I was nearing the end of things I thought the castle grounds needed. I added a final little guard's house in the dock area, which never actually gets a dock, but that's whatever. This is the castle so far. I'm actually pretty happy with it. I'm not the big expert on medieval castles, but I've created sort of a courtyard area over here for the common folk that leads into like a bigger entrance to sort of the main house where the rich people would live. Then we have the cathedral area over here, possibly area for a graveyard around it. And of course we have the docking area down here where I added like a little guard's house right there and you could have some ships into sort of a marketplace. And then there's just the area where I would imagine the richer people People spending their time. Of course, it is a little bit slanted, the terrain, so it's probably not the best place that I ended up choosing for the castle, but I think it's fairly nice. And now it's actually just time to start decorating this whole thing. I'm gonna start decorating and I'll be back once I'm done. First thing I started decorating was, of course, the front gate. And you'll see that my decorations aren't actually that detailed. I pretty much just mimic what I'd already made in the tutorial part of the video, but I still did a little bit extra. I created this big gate, which took me quite a while to decide how I wanted to look. I was sort of switching between spruce wood and dark oak, but I ended up with sort of a combination where I had spruce wood in the middle and dark oak on both sides. Then I went inside and started working on the roofs and I actually made a completely new roof design and I'm still not sure if I like it, but it's sort of this checker pattern roof design, which is well, it's a little bit odd, but I carry it around the whole build and I think it looks fairly nice when you have it on every building. But I do change a few minor details later on. Then on the back side of the main building, we had this walkway and I created like a little roof with some small cute things and I add a bunch of lights. On all the towers, I just created one roof that I just cloned to all the others. Of course, there were different size towers and I made different size roofs for those. Then there's the all the walls that I just add the same details to and I add these just stair blocks and make them all look sort of similar. And even though it becomes quite repetitive, I still think it looks a lot better than just the pure cobblestone walls. And then I add this little bridge between these two towers going over the wall. And I think that was a really nice touch. Inside the cathedral, I did a little bit of cleaning up because it was really ugly and there was a big window you could look through. So I wanted it to look nice. I tried making some mosaics, but well, it's a bit boring. I added all these uh, flags on top and I was going, decided to go with a color theme of yellow and red and I also had that in the mosaics. Okay, so I'm done with all the building I think I'm gonna do and I'm just gonna take you on a little tour of the castle now. So we're looking at the big front gate and we, if we just drop down here and go through the gate in just a bit, you will see all the things I've built a little bit more up close. 
So the first thing we see is of course the town that I've created with a bit too few houses. If you ever wanted to make this, I'd recommend making a few more, but I still think it gives the idea of what you could actually make with it. And if we look around here, we go towards the main entrance of the house and we fly over because there's actually nothing inside the house. I didn't create any interior for any of this. We could see the front gate over there and we can look over top here and we have sort of the places that I talked of before where the rich people would be and all the other stuff and we have the cathedral up here and if we go through this little gate I think it's very cute and I did change the mosaic a little bit because I thought the other one was boring if we look inside well yeah it's empty but you get the idea I also made a clock tower with a little bell and when we come around the front here I really think you get an idea of how it actually ended up turning out and you could of course make so much more out of this and put so much more detail into this and you would have such an amazing build really quickly and it's kind of funny to think that this was made with just lava casting because I really think it doesn't look like that anymore. Anyways that was all I had for you today and I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.